Today, I'm going to treat them with the best food that we can provide, this dapnya. This is a live food. Hi guys, it's a beautiful day once again and welcome back to Dexter's World Channel. Do you intend to breed your fish? Do you intend to engage in the business of fish farming? Well, this channel is right for you. Because today, I'm going to teach you on how to breed successfully our fish specifically the pearl scale these pearl scale fish are actually very beautiful and they are very elegant but how to produce them since they are slow swimmers their tummy are bulging it's difficult for us to propagate them in a massive scale and today's video allow me to teach you step by step on how to successfully breed this kind of fish let's go You know, breeding this pearl scale is really very challenging because it's not like the other ordinary fish like these orandas, these calicos that you can just allow them to spawn without strict management. But for the pearl scale, we have to strictly manage and oversee the process of the spawning because these pearl scale are egg eaters. They are really eating the eggs. That's why I made an effort to wake up early in the morning just to supervise and be able to detect the activity because if we will not remove all the rest that are not laying their eggs they will become egg eater and they will actually become the nuisance the disturbance of the pair that are laying their eggs so you can see right now that there are two pairs that are laying their eggs and they are now on the process of spawning. You will note that I have here these nylon threads and I put some weight. This is a stone that we utilize for pressing down this nylon thread so that the pearl scale will have an easy access to the nylon threads where they can spawn their eggs. This is also very necessary because the eggs will really become scattered if they are stick on this nesting materials then they will be scattered and be situated apart from each other and this is very important because if they are stick together very close to each other then when one egg is contaminated it will affect the other eggs so that's why we have to put some egg collector so that the laying of the eggs will not be on grouping. They will be scattered. As a breeder, you actually have two options in producing babies of this goldfish, this pearl scale in particular. The first one is the natural breeding and the second is the artificial or uh, the hand stripping. In the first method, you will not touch anything. You will not touch your fish. Just allow them to spawn their eggs and wait for some time before you're gonna transfer them to the main tank. What I mean is that if you will put them together in the spawning tank, you will just leave them naturally and they will spawn. They can manage to spawn their eggs. But not in the case of this pearl scale because the pearl scale will have the maximum production when there is human intervention you have to touch them you have to guide them and you have to gently hand strip them in order to maximize the spawning of the eggs because they are very fat they are not able to move fast unlike other fish like the shubunkins these comets and even this orandas they can just lay their eggs without any human intervention but in the case of the pearl scale it's different because they have this big tummy that even the male fish looks like pregnant 
So they cannot move, they cannot swing, they cannot splash. That's why we need to have human intervention. And in doing the second method, which is the hand stripping, we have to bear in mind that this is a very delicate process because we might end up killing our fish. If we will squeeze the tummy improperly, then chances are we would be killing our fish. So it should be gently massaged in the breast and then the eggs will come out. You look at this one. I have here the male and the female and we will position this male and the female like this one. And then you will witness that we will gently press the belly and the eggs and the milk. The milk is the term for the sperm of the male goldfish. So after the breeding, we will gently return them to their tank. And you can see here that I have one, two, three, four, five big tanks for our breeders, exclusively for our breeders. And we will now gently put them back here so that they can have their rest. And maybe you're interested to know about the system that we employ for our breeder fish. You will see here that we have this tube in the middle and you will also see that we have these pipes that are flowing with water. This water now came from the filtration bucket. And I use a big drum for this because as soon as the water gets through it, it will spill over down under and then goes back to the filtration buckets. And in the filtration bucket, we have the nets, we have the stones and many. We also have this uh, plants, natural. So you will see that the health of our fish is really very good. We have no issues here about the lice. We don't have issues about this uh, anchor worm. We don't even have issues about this uh, fin rats. So this is actually now the outcome of our effort and today i'm going to treat them with the best food that we can provide this dapnya this is a live food and this dapnya is taken out from the farm that we are now trying to develop in my previous blog i said that this is a blessing because dapnyas can be seen all over and this is the best source of food especially for the fry and if you are sure about your source of dapnya, meaning that if you are very sure that it's clean, it has no bacteria, then you can feed that to your breeders. You can also feed that to the fry. But be careful because if you're not sure, then better you go for the commercial pellet, which is high protein. But I love seeing them eating this dapnya. And since I am sure that my source is really clean, then I can feed them with this. See that? These are live food, dapnyas. And I will give dapnya to some of them, especially to the pearl. This is my treat. <laughs> uh, this is how I treat my fish with food. And you will see that they are really, really eating. So guys, you are looking at them now eating the dapnyas and they like this food of course this must be regulated if they can just eat a small amount of this then this is gonna be a perfect conditioning for the scheduled spawning of the eggs and you will see that we have here some jumbo lines we have this big goldfish you know this we already have produced many plenty of the offspring of this jumbo lines and we are actually now being able to sell some of them at the pet store and also I would like to mention that in the preparation for breeding we have to keenly observe 
whether or not the belly is already soft. One indication that you can already breed your goldfish is the fact that when you are going to touch the belly of your fish, it's already very soft. And two or three days from the intended breeding, I condition them with wheat germ. These are fibers that can make the belly soft to ensure that during the scheduled breeding, they will really spawn their eggs. I don't know what's the miracle of this wheat germ, but I have to tell you that it's been an effective conditioning food for our breeder goldfish. If you're going to give them other foods like high protein foods, then you have to mix that with this wheat germ because this wheat germ are already proven. They can be effectively used for the conditioning of our breeders. I'd like you to see my selection of this cow rancho. These are good quality fish that can also be sold in the market so quickly. And I'm happy because we were able to breed this cow rancho and we were able to select some good lines that are qualified to become our future breeders. And I'm so happy about this because these are not ordinary fish. These are actually expensive fish that you cannot breed anytime. You have to get the timing about the breeding of this cow rancho and I'm glad that we were able to breed them very successfully now and another future breeders that we expect to lay eggs and produce offspring for the Dexter's World blog and I'm hoping that in the next couple of months we're gonna be able to see them spawning their eggs so you will see now that they are very fat and very active these are the good bloodlines that we can be proud of especially if they're gonna grow big then they are very elegant to look at inside the aquarium you know my joy is feeding goldfish because they're really very responsive and these are the tank of our breeder comets and shubunkins and some calicos and we have some high pin kois right here maybe you will ask why i made this elevated the tanks are actually elevated because i wanted to siphon the water very easily when your tank is elevated you can have a good gravity of the siphoning of the the water and i also find it very easy in monitoring the health of our fish if they are on an elevated uh, tanks you can easily look at them and you can easily detect whether they have issues on their skins and they have issues on their bodies they are sick then you can easily monitor their health so these are the things that we can share with you so far i hope you will continue to like and share our videos and if you are encouraged with this kind of video I will invite you to please subscribe if you are not subscribed to this channel. I will invite you to please subscribe and hit that notification bell because we are uploading videos every two days now and you will be notified of our regular uploads. And I'd like to see you in my next video only here at Dexter's World.